Shield Maidens. They used to really completely dominate the battles last season at top tier, but they got a fairly rightfully deserved little bit of a nerf. So I want to go and kind of go back to them, take a little bit of a look. Are they can are they still good? Can they still be viable in the current meta? I mean, the short answer to this for me is yes. They're certainly not as good as they once were. We don't see every player using them now, but they are still a really, really solid unit. So let's just very quickly run through them and we'll get straight into some battles. I'm running them um, along the bottom veterancy line. That's because primarily I'm using them in sword mode under cover commander. Um, you do occasionally, you know, I'll put them into spear for a little bit of anti-cav, but predominantly using them just in sword mode, nice and simply. Um, in terms of doctrines, I've got some pretty nice stuff actually on these guys. Um, girls, even. The defense doctrine, which obviously gives them that nice base 5% damage reduction, the extra 130 defensive stats all round. The extra block on both both recovery and just base block. A siege fighter doctrine for a little bit of extra damage. And basically a reduction for cavalry damage. When you stick them in the spear mode, even though they don't really do much damage to cav, they actually don't really take very much damage because it sort of protects them quite well. Anyway, let's just hop straight into some battles with them. See what we can do. See if the shield maidens can still be viable. So we kick things off on a little bit of Reginopolis. Now, as a heads up, there is a lot of peasants killed on this clip. But it kind of highlights, in a way, what, for me, Shield Maidens are good at. When you start to get in sort of really big fights with equal tier stuff, they do start to struggle. One-on-one, -on -one, they can do okay if you can control the fight with your hero, but they really dominate in these sort of um, push-through fights like this. So the enemy's pushed into the tunnel. We've been kind of slow to react. And you can see they're actually already up and out. Kind of really bad observations by me. But anyway, go on with the cover commander. Deciding if we want to take this fight, switch to swords and decide, yep, yeah, right, no one else is going in, but I think if we lead the way, people will follow. So initially assessing, we've got three or four enemy heroes uh, there, trying to get in, end up using my ultimate to push through. And you can see how quickly we cut through stuff like this. Largely lower tier stuff, a little bit better stuff in some of the javelins and stuff, but you can see how we can just push through. And now I'm just sort of going flat out with my hero, trying to push through. The unit will follow behind, I'm not too worried about that. Managed to avoid the javelin throw, for, thankfully, and grab another two hero kills. Keeping the pressure on, trying to chase down the Nadachi. Not really interested in the peasants. They'll get themselves killed just fine. Some javelin kills would be nice, but the unit should do that as we push through. Try and block off the path for this Nadachi. Unit can catch up them from behind. As soon as it catches up, absolutely butchers the hero. Almost instantly. And these Shia Magnus do that really, really well. Because they're in such a tight pack when they're in that cover commander mode they just instantly obliterate heroes if they you know get caught on their own like that particularly from behind it's just quite comical now i guess it's worth pointing out this is really how i tend to run them i do sometimes run them in spear mode um if we've got enemy cavalry or anything like that around and of course as soon as you deactivate the cover commander you need to put them back into spear mode to be able to reactivate it you can't put them into cover commander from sword you have to go cover commander and then switch from spear to sword now there's certainly an argument that using things like the guardian which is giving um, defensive buffs to both themselves and allied units as well as making use of some of their other abilities could be a much better use of shield maidens but for me, I just find simplicity is best, and just to use them as just as basically up-armoured prefecture guards just works well for my playstyle. Might not for you, but it does for me. Anyway, get this more nicely knocked down. Glaive doing its best thing, just locked him down completely from horse to death. So that's one enemy maul dealt with, and we can then sort of get the pressure on and start to push up. Tried to get the other two mauls on the back foot. Managed to get a second one locked down. Grab another hero kill. I think that's five now we've had. Um, and we do get a little bit of damage as we fight against these berserkers. Now really, so long as we can control the fight and the berserkers don't get sort of behind us, from, you know, from front on, we should be able to beat berserkers fairly convincingly. It's just that enemy hero is doing a great job of controlling the fight. And because I'm currently running a medium armor glaive, I'm a little bit fragile. Get into a bit of a more prolonged fight, those halberdiers would have been much better off just holding their position in the phalanx than pushing into us like that. And I nearly die, but we just managed to take down the enemy bow hero. We can then pull back inside the walls and get healed up at the supply point. As the unit's doing their healing, I'm trying to decide where we want to be going next. A little bit of stuff pushing in on that sort of far left-hand wall, and I was thinking, uh, could, could be a viable option. We could go and have a look down there. 
My healing comes off cooldown, so it's an opportunity for, to, to whack that on. And I call the unit to me. Now, obviously, we've only got a third of them or so left, so our overall effectiveness here is going to be significantly reduced. But you kind of come to a point, particularly when you get to the end of the life on sort of units, where it's really um, just not worth not getting them killed if that makes sense it's better to push in with what's left just get them finished off grab what extra kills you can and then get onto your next unit otherwise you're just sort of stuck with a low effectiveness unit that isn't really doing much of course some more peasants <laughs> i know this kill numbers on this this battle has been quite artificially inflated by peasants but there has been quite a good chunk of other stuff as well Anyway, start to get in stuck into the front of some Imperial Spearguard, but really, Imperial Spearguard so defensive in this sort of situation, and with a double maul setup pushing in, I just don't have the hero health, or there are enough abilities to really CC control that fight, and the unit eventually gets overwhelmed and gets killed. Next up, we move on to Tour of Aros, a map that we don't really get all that often, but kind of enjoyable when we do get it. Anyway, um, I was a bit slow in noticing. I was up on the A point. Seems to be a bit of a theme here in me being slow to notice. But notice that the B point was being pressured. The wall was down. Not many people responding. So come down. All we've got here allied wise is a few village watchmen. Not really going to be putting up much of a defense. Quite a bit of stuff coming in from the gateway. A couple of heroes. Imperial spear guard of the high tier stuff. She's making me a bit nervous. Kind of deciding which way I want to engage. Go on to sword mode and initially push into the front of these Imperial shield guard. Now, without anything sort of backing them up, I'm fine, I can deal with it. And actually, the hero must have got himself killed because the unit dies. But if you watch the bulk of the enemy team push past them to the supply point, I really don't want to take this fight. They've got enemy shield maidens on here. We know there's um, enemy monks on there as well or hanging around. I don't really want to take this fight, but really, we've got no choice. If we lose this supply point, then they're going to be able to get out better units and it's really game over. Managed to lock down and deal with the enemy pole axe, which is a really big win for us, because that means we can now hopefully take on these shield maidens and try and just focus on them. Because that chain dart and scimitar, good as it is one on one versus heroes, is not so good in this sort of fight. Trying to sort of control the fight slightly with my hero, trying to take down the enemy chain dart, we get some allied support coming in from behind, and we do push through, grabs us up to about 50 kills as we start to put pressure on that final point and manage to get in. And that really enables us to hold this supply point. Sometimes it's kind of worth the risk of defeat to try and hold out. Anyway, we get some grey hairs coming down. I don't really want to be pushing into them head on. Our monks kind of just go straight in, which, which is kind of a shame. I think if they'd held back, we'd have been in a much better situation because we could have taken a, a slightly different fight. I'm trying to avoid the fight, but we've really got three uh, mauls coming in now. I think maybe even four mauls. Trying to control them with my hero, but they haven't got the grey hairs pushing in, the four walls plus more units, and it's just too much, and the shoemaidens get overwhelmed and killed. So, kind of in this situation of, you know, they can be good, as they charge into a slight wall, but they still get overwhelmed quite easily, and once they get flanked, once they get heroes overwhelming them, once they get in those sort of bad situations, they do collapse, they do go down pretty quickly, they don't hold up all that well. So, still a good unit, certainly not what they were, the previous seasons which is definitely a good thing because they were just absolutely everywhere but they are still a viable and a very enjoyable tier 5 unit anyway thanks for watching see you all on the next one